Arif, so tell me a little bit about um, you as a coach and maybe your work when you work with building a coaching culture. Well, it goes back a long time back uh, for the past 13 years. Uh, professionally, uh, when I joined ICF, I find that coaching is the thing that I really want to do. And uh, dealing with uh, developing a uh, human being, developing uh, a human, and especially in the organization, I felt like this is really my area. I'm, I'm always going with the premises like, you know, uh, whatever we do in life is just a reflection of uh, what we have inside. But sometimes it's just whatever is inside is not interpreted, not translated in a way where people can see it, in a way where we can improve our uh, work, improve our development in the uh, workplace, and also uh, reflect on us as people, as person, as uh, at the end, as a human being. So I find uh, coaching is really a, a thing that I really want to do for the rest of my life. And the thing that I really passionate about, then I started my path through ICF. And since then, I've been doing coaching for organization. And the whole thing is about how to bring awareness to the individual and to the organization through higher awareness. Mm. So um, that work that you do through bringing awareness, was that part of the work that you did in building the coaching culture? Absolutely. I, I believe today what we really need, Veronica, we, we need to speed up and to skill up the leaders uh, to empower uh, their employees it's not that they don't know how to do the job. And especially, I think, you know, we're moving into an era where people like to have their autonomy, like to have their, uh, their say about what they do. And uh, from what I have experienced, uh, people would not like it when you tell them what to do. So creating a coaching culture is actually an empowerment for all employees to enhance the performance, to give them that sense of an autonomy to give them that sense of their being. Hence, they're more confident in pitching in in the decision-making and the performance. And I find this, this is the best way. Or let me say, the coaching coaching is, is the right tool to improve that bit about empowering people and to engage them in the decision-making and day-to-day -day operation. And do you find that it makes a difference to results as well, Arif? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I believe, Ronica, when, I, when we hire some people, we hire them for their skills, knowledge, and experiences. When I tell them, when I instruct them what to do, what am I gaining? I'm not gaining anything. So I think, you know, uh, when we allow people to bring out their best, to bring out their talent, to bring out what's the hidden potential, I think that's what the performance give enhance and change. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, what does this award mean for you personally? Uh, it works in, uh, for me in two levels. Uh, one level is personally, it makes me feel that I am contributing in this whole game. And since we have started in Saudi Arabia at Vision 2030, I always wanted to be a part of it. And thank goodness, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of opportunity and as I, DF is one of those opportunity that makes us as Saudis, as national, as being part of this country, engaged in the whole, uh, in the bigger game by developing these leaders. And that's what it means to me, really give me that fulfillment. And in, in the other level is, I believe today, a PRISM Award, it gives that sense for the organization they are in the right track for developing their people, for developing the employees, and especially the leadership, which impact the decision making and the, uh, the going forward, actually, and meeting the vision 2030. Mm. So it, it, it has, a, I'm just going to reflect that back a little bit, but it, it has that sense of being for the greater good, for the greater good of the nation as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
there is nothing better than you know getting involved in one to one or in group sessions and participating in developing this to meet the, the greater purpose. Mm. Okay, lovely. And what did you observe were the benefits of the coaching program within SIDF? I uh, thought there is, uh, uh, what I have seen, what I have observed uh, through what we learn, we don't get uh, full access to everything that goes, but we have enough access to know uh, what are the measures. Like, for example, uh, trust is, let me, let me just get the right uh, percentage, a trust index after the coaching, after the intervention group coaching and the individual coaching, especially after the pandemic, trust index have increased, really a remarkable increase, which has increased by 69%. Wow. <clears throat> okay. And I thought that was remarkable. That was really a good measure of success in this area, especially now. And... What impact does increasing that trust by nearly 70%, what impact does that have for the organization? What was your observation of that? Better relationship, mm. better communication, which is those where the premises to work around is how can we improve the communication in the organization? How can we improve the business? But I think at the end of the day, improving all that impact, the relationship between teams between individuals and between departments. Mm. Yes, it, it's probably an aside, Arif, but I um, don't know if you know Lencioni's model of teams and the foundation of it is building trust. Um, yes, yeah. Okay, so, and and was it, just talking of the pandemic, was this, do you think, more difficult to implement as a result of the pandemic? Uh, I recall when I right during the pandemic, there was several uh, instruction from the CEO to do a lot of group coaching. And uh, I also remember through the uh, interaction with, with the organization, uh, during that time, there was a clear instruction to go for individual coaching. And that's why we introduced the uh, coaching clinics in different areas. And I think, you know, dealing with, uh, uh, with, with the whole thing uh, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, I think that was uh, a great significant change in there. Mm, okay, wonderful. Um, what would be the biggest tip that you would give to other coaches who are wanting to implement a um, coaching culture within an organization? Mm. I would say, uh, step in there as a coach, talk about what kind of uh, benefit the organization would benefit of creating coaching culture. Uh, talk more about creating uh, depend independency, talk about more creativity in the organization, mm -hmm. talk about how can we transform, how can we change the socialized mind in the organization to a self-authoring mind, hence to benefit from people in the organization and how can they empower uh, leaders? How can they empower their employees uh, through creating this coaching culture and how coaching culture impacts and participate and contribute in raising a trust which impact the relationship in the workplace. Mm. So, um, Arif, I'm sorry, <clears throat> my internet just paused while you were saying that. So do you mind if we do that one again? Is that all right? Yes, yes. Okay. Where would you like me to start from? Um, so <clears throat> if you were talking, I think if we start from the beginning, because then if you, know, if you change words, it'll still flow. Okay. So if I ask okay. the question again, so what is the biggest tip that you would give to coaches who may be looking at implementing a coaching culture within an organization? I would say come out from wherever you are as a coach. Talk to the leaders in the organization. Don't to tell them what coaching can bring them. 
Uh, what I believe the biggest thing we can tell the leaders is how they can empower their employees. How can they bring the, the, the best out of them uh, through creating a coaching culture? And most importantly, how to create in, uh, independency, hence interdependency. And how to move from those socialized mind. I'm going to quote Robert Keegan in Immunity to Change. How can we transform uh, uh, socialized mind to self-authoring mind, hence to self-transforming mind. Mm. I think that's, that's, that's the idea. I don't believe if we tell the leaders what coaching can do to them, what creating culture can do to them, I don't think they would, uh, they would hesitate one second of that. Every leader wants to create leaders. Every leader wants to uh, focus on strategy, focus on what's the best they can do, focus on how to be tra uh, self-transforming mind rather than being socialized mind. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, interesting. We, I'd love that book, Immunity to Change. I think it's it's really yeah. fundamental and it was fundamental in my training, my coaching training as well. Okay, so um, is there anything else that you kind of feel that you would like to add I think we should take this into stages, Veronica. Uh, we, we are not asking for quantum leap for the organization. Let's just start slowly and embedding the culture of the of the coaching by starting the external coaching, the executive coaching. Slowly move into the team coaching and group coaching, uh, action learning coaching. And I would not suggest to create in-house coaches right away. Uh, we don't need to uh, have that quantum leap change in the organization. Walk with them, walk them through, and see when they are ready for creating a coaching culture. It would happen organically if they see the benefit, if they see the result of the executive coaching and the team coaching, as well as the group coaching. Yes, so it's a it's an incremental building upon what's come before, rather than saying we're going to change and this is how we're going to change it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always say uh, in coaching, meet them where they are, right? Mm. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, uh, take them slowly. There is no, no shame on walk them slowly and see what is the speed, what is the rhythm and what is the pace they're going with. Eventually, I could you not, this organization, other organization are so about creating the coaching culture because they've seen the benefit of it. But what we do as coaches, I think our role is to, to unpack what is really a coaching culture is, what's inside it, what can it bring to the organization. Mm, okay, brilliant. All right, that's really lovely. Thank you very much, Arif. Um, um, that's, um, I think that's worked very well. Just, just as a, a um, aid memoir for me, um, there you presume in SPDF you did have external internal coaches and then the training of managers and leaders using coaching skills. You had those three elements. Yes, yes. and we have we have uh, we have also coaching uh, webinars mm -hmm. done from external as well. Uh, we have uh, coaching skills as well, and we have the external coaching as we started way back from. 2018 as well mm. and okay. the coaching clinic which is that's where i think that's what brought this whole thing the hype uh, for everybody because i think the idea when we offer the coaching not only for the executive and leadership offering it to the employees through the coaching clinics i think that's where the uh, the coaching culture started to sprout mm. so tell me how you ran those coaching clinics just, um, just so that I'm clear about that. We have a few ICF uh, accredited coaches. We have ACCs, PCCs, and MCCs. Mm -hmm. And we have four areas. Let me just uh, uh, name these four areas we have. We have performance improvement. We have career uh, development. And we have leadership development. And we have business. Uh, 
what we run in three months, I think, I believe 120 sessions. What we did, we uh, open a platform for people to sign in for different coaches. We gave the option for the employee, what is exactly that you really need today and in, in your development. You need leadership, you need business, you need performance. So uh, they, the employees will go to the platform, they will reserve or they will book with the certain coach after they read their CV and uh, voila, they go through it. Wow, brilliant. Okay, and that, was that a, in a series of coaching sessions one-to-one or was it a group coaching? One-to-one. One-to-one. Mm. Mm. Brilliant. Okay, so that was the coaching clinic. 120 sessions, yes. Wow. <laughs> and that, that is going to, I assume, that is going to mean that then you have many people spread across all parts of the organization who have experienced coaching as well. Yes, we started with the leadership in uh, 2018. And the leadership, they had uh, quite a few executive coaches and can't recall the number, but that's how it started. But then we said, if we're going to create a coaching culture, then everybody has to experience it. Mm. And that's why uh, we went into individual coaching for the employees through the clinic. But before that, we ran quite a few uh, team coaching and a group coaching as well. Okay. And those group coaching were with um, leaders or where were they in the organization? Leaders and their teams within the organization as well. Okay, brilliant. And for the groups, was that groups that were coming together, forming and going apart again or were they ongoing groups? Uh, Okay, all right. Let me just leave just that there. drop that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll drop that. Okay. Um, anything else that you'd like to add then? Uh, yeah. Uh, as coaching in the region is uh, pretty uh, new, as coaching to the government sectors is pretty new. Mm-hmm. It's, it's even newer. My invitation for all coaches, my invitation for all organization is be courageous enough to create that coaching culture. Be courageous enough, you coach, to uh, to nominate those organizations that you have coached. You have no idea how much impact you've done unless you go through the whole process. When we went through the whole process, we've seen how much has been done. Mm. and. Uh, to see this is happening in this region, to see the government sectors is paying more attention to coaching. I think this is the uh, this is the era. This is, I think, the time where you start introducing that coaching culture. This is the time where you start uh, emphasizing in what is the benefit of from uh, coaching. What is the difference when we just mentor or when we coach? And or we we uh, just do training. I think also one one other aspect is when we created the coaching culture, we created it 360 degrees. That means executive coaching, team coaching, clinic for the employees, and also coaching followed by training. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, training followed by coaching. Mm. which is or whenever somebody goes into a training is always followed by that coaching uh, bit to anchor the learning, to, uh, uh, to see how to implement it. So I think, you know, all of this, when we uh, put it all together, it's going to create more leaders in the organizations. And it sounds not only that, Araf, it also sounds as though the process of applying for the award was also useful for you as a coach and for the organization as itself in terms of measuring what was happening. Do you want to say, is there anything more that you'd like to say about that? Uh, it is uh, a form of measuring success. And it is a form, sometimes sometime what happened, Veronica, uh, we, we don't know how much we have done in the past. And I think taken through the process, it's gave us an idea and also gave us clarity on what needs to be strategized for the next uh, few years to sustain this culture. Uh, I think what, what really helped us to see the measurement of the increase of the index of the trust 
uh, I think what helped us also to see how many sessions we have made and the feedback that we have got from the employees, what helped us also to, to, uh, to draw some kind of a plan and strategy to sustain this, uh, this hive, to sustain this vibe, to sustain this, uh, th this, this culture. Yes, lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's really, um, it's really brilliant. Thank you, Aaron.